In 2015, I decided to make sustainability a priority in my life. The problem, though, was that I used to think of it as an all-black, all-white approach. Either you boycott fast fashion completely, or you don't. Either you avoid single-use plastic completely, or you don't. Either you buy completely sustainable, or you don't. Either you care, or you don't. Over the course of the past few years, though, I realized that between the two opposite sides of the spectrum, there is an entire world. There are many different factors that play a role in someone's life. Gender, race, social class, physical and mental health and ability, financial situation, and so much more. There is definitely no one-size-fits-all approach. Intersectionality needs to be kept into consideration as well. An all-or-nothing approach like the one that I used to have was not at all considerate of those factors, and at first, I didn't even realize this because I check most of the boxes when it comes to privilege. Ever since I went from living with a partner to living on my own after breaking up, I had to start making very different choices when it comes to sustainability. I am living on my own with a part-time, lowish income only, and I no longer have someone to split all of my monthly costs with. I know that I still talk from a privileged position, but the reality is that I can no longer afford some of the things that I could do before. But sustainability is not just buying organic produce at the farmer's market, buying food exclusively in bulk, or buying clothes only from ethical brands. Sustainability can be so much more and can be achieved even in small actions. And every one of us, depending on their situation, can have a different interpretation of it. And that is absolutely okay. These are some of the simple and cheap sustainable habits that I had for years. Buy less, choose well, and make it last. This pretty much sums up my mindset when it comes to how and what I buy. I buy less, I buy mindfully, and regardless of what I bought, how much I've spent, and where I bought it from, I treat that item the best that I can and take good care of it so it will last me longer. In the era of fancy but wasteful coffee machines where all you need to do is press a button, I stick to the good old basics. I've always used a mocha to make my coffee, the traditional Italian coffee maker, and I always stick to it. It makes the coffee preparation a more mindful and enjoyable experience and leaves no waste behind, as the coffee grounds can be composted or further used, for example, as a plant fertilizer or body scrub. When it comes to getting rid of body hair, I've been dealing with it mostly with an epilator and I've been using the exact same one since 2006 and a safety razor. I still use disposable waxing strips from time to time, but the amount of waste that I produce is still much lower than average. The epilator obviously produces no other waste than my hair, and the blades of the safety razor can be recycled, leaving no disposable plastic waste behind. All I need to do is buy new blades every once in a while, so I also save a ton of money in the long run because I no longer depend on using many disposable products that need to be replaced regularly. I've been buying clothes secondhand for literally ages. Well, right now I can no longer afford to buy from ethical sustainable brands that much. So, whether it is from a thrift store, an app like Vinted, or a clothing swap, I absolutely love finding clothes and accessories secondhand. I can find gorgeous styles and wardrobe staples for less and have fun with fashion without breaking the bank or damaging the environment, as these are things that are already existing and need no further waste of resources. I obviously still need to buy new from time to time, but I always turn to the second-hand market first to see what I can find. Instead of buying fancy makeup removers or waste an insane amount of cotton pads every day, I use oil straight from the bottle to remove my makeup, usually avocado or coconut oil, and little cotton cloths that I got at the drugstore. 
I can remove my makeup very easily while leaving no waste behind and being gentle to my skin. I have enough cloths to carry on for a few days and I simply wash them with the rest of my laundry in the washing machine before reusing them again. Another cheap and easy way to be sustainable is to buy foods that are about to expire or that were unsold to reduce food waste. Food waste is still a huge problem. But luckily, more and more supermarkets, stores, or cafes and restaurants are trying to do something about it and sell these foods at a discounted price so they won't get wasted. Foods that are about to expire are still perfectly fine to consume. Choosing to buy these is an active fight against food waste and climate change. Whenever I receive a parcel, I save the packing material so I can reuse it for future shippings. For example, if I sell something on Vinted. And because I conveniently work in online retail, I take to my workplace what I don't use so it can be further reused to ship orders. The same goes for gifts. Whenever I receive gifts, I try to save as much wrapping paper and gift wrapping material as possible so I can reuse it to pack sustainably the gifts that I give to my loved ones. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like it or leave a comment below so that I know that you would like to see a part two. Also, share this video if you found it helpful or inspiring and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in my next one.